This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Being your best self feels good for your loved ones and for you. Visit betterhelp.com super and get back to being you. Hey brother! <laughs> oh boy, you guys, for the first time in over a year, we have brand new Harry Potter content to look at. In case you missed it, yesterday, the first trailer for Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore dropped, and there is a ton to unpack. From Credence and his fancy new hairdo, to young Aberforth, to Jacob getting a wand, and more Newt dancing with another animal. Swivel, but delicately. Seriously, there's just so much to talk about and no time to waste. Let's just dive right in. That would be my brother. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk a lot about BetterHelp on the show, and today we're talking about some of the stigmas surrounding mental health. For example, many people think you should just wait until experiencing something like really hard before going to therapy. But you really don't have to. Therapy is a tool to utilize before those things happen. And talking to a professional can help you be better prepared for when those difficult moments do happen. Going to therapy regularly was something that totally helped me prepare for the very stressful year that was 2020. I mean, having twins, owning a small business during a pandemic, and just trying to stay positive in an uncertain world. And with BetterHelp, you're able to get that therapy and manage that stress from the safety of your own home. So take care of yourself today with BetterHelp Online Therapy. One of the cool features is that it's customized, meaning you can have video, phone, or even just live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to be on camera or anything if you don't want to. Plus, it is much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with your therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. Plus, they have a special offer for our viewers. You can get 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash Super. That's betterhelp.com slash super for 10% off your first month. Link is in the description down below. All right, let's just start at the beginning. A very good place to start with the golden snitch. This is actually somehow the second time we've seen one for this movie. The first time being in the trailer teaser, which I guess is a thing now, where Dumbledore is reaching up to grab it. And to me, this very much just looks like a way of sending secret messages a la Harry Snitch in the Deathly Hallows. So I'm very curious as to what is inside that snitch. Immediate thought, probably too big, but maybe the blood pact could be in there? Just flying around? You need the flush memory to get it open. Seems safe. How good of a secret do you think is Grindelwald? I'm gonna go with not as good as Dumbledore because if this snitch is like Harry's in response to flesh memories, it means that Dumbledore would have been the first to touch it, which would then also sort of confirm one of our other theories that Dumbledore was actually the youngest seeker a century before Harry. You must be the youngest Quidditch player in a century, according to McGonagall. But who knows, this movie is called The Secrets of Dumbledore and it's likely that inside the snitch is a secret, so. Moving on though, Albus is not the only Dumbledore we get to see in this trailer. We next cut to Hogsmeade, where we get to see Aberforth, who sounds very unimpressed with Newt and Theseus's search for his brother. That would be my brother. Interestingly, when you see this shot, it looks like something is written in the mirror behind him, which could spell like no music, although it's kind of spelled wrong, but that might actually be canon. In Goblet of Fire, Albus says, my own brother Aberforth was prosecuted for practicing inappropriate charms on a goat. It was all over the papers, but did Aberforth hide? No, he did not. He held his head high and went about his business as usual. Of course, I'm not entirely sure he can read, so that may have not have been bravery. I've always thought that was him just taking a dig at Aberforth, but maybe he actually can't read or spell? Either way, I find the exchange between Aberforth and Newton Theseus really interesting because Aberforth, obviously not impressed with Albus, but he's talking to two brothers who have also historically not gotten along very well. <laughs> I think that might have been the best moment of my life. Yeah, I swear, Newton and Tina are the like literal best things about these movies. Moving on though, next up is probably the first super important thing we see in the trailer, which is Grindelwald being played by Mads Mikkelsen now, siphoning out a memory from Yusuf Kama with the Elder Wand. And honestly, I'm already loving Mads as Grindelwald. I mean, it's the third movie in a row he's been played by a different actor, and I'm starting to wonder if at some point they need to just admit he's like a metamorph Magi or something. The question is though, what memory is Grindelwald siphoning out of Yusuf? And the 
answer almost definitely has to be the secret leader revealed at the end of Crimes of Grindelwald about the baby swap at sea. Which in case you've forgotten, which I couldn't blame you for because you know, it's been a while and Crimes of Grindelwald was kind of only okay. And the scene in question was pretty confusing at best. But what Lita reveals is that as a child, while she was traveling to America at sea, she was trying to get away from her younger brother Corvus who was crying nonstop. So she swapped him with another baby. But then before she could swap them back, the ship sank and her younger brother Corvus died at sea. Grindelwald then later reveals to Credence that his true identity is apparently Aurelius Dumbledore. But here's the thing, Grindelwald doesn't know about the swap. But Grindelwald thinks he's right, which means that the baby that drowned was not just Corvus Lestrange, but apparently somehow also the Aurelius in question. And we actually have an entire video about this if you wanna see like the full details on that, you can click the card. But Lita only reveals that information to Newt, Tina, Jacob, Yusuf, Nagini, and Credence. So they're the only ones that know, and Lita promptly dies immediately after this, lessening the number again. And true, Credence does join Grindelwald right after this as well, but I don't think he's going to tell him this particular secret. Because what Credence has been seeking his entire life is acceptance and identity, something Grindelwald is more than happy to give to him. But if Credence tells him the secret, then all that's going to get taken away. None of it will be true. But I think that is exactly the memory that Grindelwald is taking from Yusuf, meaning Grindelwald will now know the truth about the baby swap, which means he'll also know that Credence isn't who he thought he was. Also, side note, if all that is true, then it also means we still actually have no idea who Credence is. But there's really two big takeaways. One is that Credence will not be nearly as important to Grindelwald with this information on the table. And two, it means Grindelwald will also know that Credence was lying to him by omitting this information, which might make Grindelwald kind of mad. Like, I don't know, maybe he shoots a wave of water at Credence and then apparates right to his throat. But I can also see that sort of thing motivating Credence to try and reprove his worth to Grindelwald by taking out Albus anyway. Not that he's gonna have any real luck in that department. I mean, we see them fighting twice in this trailer and in both times, Dumbledore looks in complete control despite the fact that Credence looks insanely powerful and angry. I mean, in the first one, he just sort of waves him off with his wand and in the second one, he just raises his hand, doesn't even look affected by the blast. Which is really saying something for the power level of Dumbledore. If you will recall, 20 some odd orders in the first Fantastic Beast movie, we're having trouble controlling an untamed and just sort of out of control Credence. And now Albus is just completely holding his own against a very motivated, very in control, very well-trained Credence. Side note, what do you think this pool of water Grindelwald is standing in is personally, I think it is like a makeshift pensive or something that Grindelwald can use to see the memories, maybe the ones that he's extracted from Yusuf. I know the pensive feels like a really unique artifact, but we know even from just the first Fantastic Beast movie that different kinds of pools can show you those memories. Also not for nothing, but I think that's a baby Thestral next to him, which is very interesting. I mean, we know the elder one has a Thestral tail hair core, so. I don't know, is he trying to like recreate that power or something? Moving on though, next up we see Newt traveling through some sort of bamboo forest all on his lonesome. Or well, with Pickett, I guess. Personally, I think this is gonna be the very start of the movie, which is why he's by himself. He's just off on a little mission, possibly recruiting some sort of new beast, possibly this beast right here, which we have not seen before. It is a brand new beast. But doesn't it just look like it would make this exact sound? Or who knows, maybe he's returning his Akamis from the first movie to the wild. We do see them in a bamboo enclosure inside his briefcase. Speaking of meeting up with people though, next up in the trailer, we see the team as introduced by Theseus, who's also on the team. First up is Bundy, who you may or may not remember from the beginning of Crimes of Grindelwald. She is Newt's assistant. She shows up for like two minutes to fawn over Newt's soaking wet body before disappearing again for the rest of the movie, leaving us all to wonder, why was she even in the movie? Honestly, why she's been recruited on this specific team is odd to me at best, but they must task her with something important. I mean, here she is on like a solo mission, apparently in Germany, I think. Next up is Yusuf himself, who we learn is descended from a very old wizarding line, which is somewhat new information. We did do a bit of digging though and learned that just the last name Kama is actually a really popular last name in Western Africa. And that set off some alarm bells here at SCB because of this line in the first movie. I met one in Sudan three months ago. And Sudan, in case you're wondering, is indeed in Africa, which just 
feels like it's too close to not be connected. That said, Yusuf's wiki page says he's from Senegal, but I honestly cannot find the source for it. In any case, the important takeaway is that his family lineage is gonna play a role in some way. Next up on the team is school teacher Yulaylee Hicks, or Lolly. She is the charms professor at Ilvermorny. And believe it or not, we have seen her before. She was in Crimes of Grindelwald. Nicholas Flamel opens his like big book of allies or whatever that was. And she's the one who comes up and tells him that they're all counting on him. And last but certainly not least is Jacob, the muggle, who Newt gives a wand on Dumbledore's orders. Look out for Christmas. Which like, I'm sorry, excuse me, what? A wand? What for? Giving Jacob a wand is just like, what? It certainly has implications. In fact, I'm gonna pause right now and do a quick literary lesson on the phrase Chekhov's gun. Chekhov's gun, if you don't know, is a dramatic principle that states that every element in a story must be necessary and irrelevant elements should be removed. Elements should not appear to make false promises by never coming into play. And the example that's always given to demonstrate this principle is the act of putting a gun on stage when you're watching a play. Because a gun, by its very nature, is dramatic. It's a violent weapon. It creates tension just by being there. But according to the principle of Chekhov's gun, if you put a gun on stage and none of the characters ever fire it, then you have violated the principle. So getting back to Fantastic Beasts, as far as I'm concerned, Jacob's wand may as well be called Chekhov's wand. Everything we've ever been told about Jacob says he's a muggle. And everything we know about wands says that if he's holding it, nothing should happen. But I am sorry, you have now handed him a wand and it better do something. Either this means Jacob will in fact turn out to be magical, which would be awesome, although it does somewhat undercut the messaging that even a muggle can make a big difference. Or it's possible Dumbledore just wants him to have a wand to better blend in. I mean, after all, in this universe, wands are weapons. So even just having what looks like a weapon might be useful, or maybe Dumbledore has enchanted this particular stick of wood to be able to do something that looks like magic, even if the person holding it isn't magic. I don't know, that kind of seems lame. Or perhaps it's not a wand at all. It's a tool of some kind disguised as a wand that Jacob can use to subdue Queenie. Maybe he's the only one who they think will be able to get close to her. But whatever it is, he's certainly trying to use it right here, battling who I think has to be Queenie based on the trailer editing, but who knows. Almost no matter what though, he is gonna have a big moment with that stick. While we're on Jacob, let's also talk about this scene at the very end of the trailer where apparently a muggle, Jacob, is sitting in the Great Hall at Hogwarts talking to the students. This is a kind of perplexing scene because strictly speaking, muggles aren't supposed to be able to see Hogwarts. Although that could just be the rule like if you're looking at it from the outside. Because going back to the end of Crimes of Grindelwald, Jacob certainly looks confused here on the bridge, like what are we doing here? But it's possible he's also just looking amazed. Or even if he can't see it from the outside, maybe he can once he's on the inside. And this is just a rare exception to letting muggles inside the castle. However, it does also mean he could have some magic in him after all. Like maybe he's a squib like Filch. That would at the very least preserve his status as a non-magical being, but also secure his place in the wizarding world. As of course will the eventual reveal that he's a descendant of the actual Helga Hufflepuff video by clicking the card. Three points to Hufflepuff. Moving on though, next up, let's jump to the uh, <clears throat> room re-require, aka the room of requirement, where Dumbledore has what looks like a giant spinning port key and a big old circle of briefcases. Now, first of all, it is interesting to me that Dumbledore knows about this room at all. Because in Goblet of Fire, he's having a conversation with Karkaroff where I always thought he had like accidentally stumbled onto the room and was describing it to Karkaroff. Only this morning, for instance, I took a wrong turning on the way to the bathroom and found myself in a beautifully proportioned room I have never seen before, containing a really rather magnificent collection of chamber pots. Possibly it is only accessible at 5.30 in the morning, or it may only appear at the quarter moon, or when the seeker has an exceptionally full bladder. Personally, I always interpreted that as Dumbledore stumbling into the room of requirement, it having what he required, chamber pots, and then him not being able to find it again. But now, according to this trailer, Dumbledore already knew about the room of requirement, which leads me to believe that there must also then be a magically appearing bathroom somewhere in the castle. Which really, it's no big deal. I guess it's fine if Dumbledore already knows about the room of requirement. In fact, it could even explain why specifically the room is able to form a tunnel between the castle and the Hogshead Inn. Like maybe Dumbledore himself is responsible for that. 
that could be cool. It would also mean that the room is yet another secret he didn't just tell Harry about, which is like, you know, no surprise at all. Although it's nice they keep finding ways to retcon new things he didn't tell Harry into the story. Or who knows, maybe he's just being coy when he's talking to Karkaroff. I mean, <laughs> can't be giving away castle secrets now, can we? Anyway, the big cylinder looks like some sort of giant port key capable of being reused and sending the users to different countries. I don't know what the team is going to be doing and wherever they're going, but my guess is that they each have their own briefcase full of some of Newt's beasts as part of their personal arsenal. In fact, you can even see some of Newt's little teleporting bird things. You know, uh, these things right here, fighting alongside of Lolly and Theseus. Interestingly though, the port key represents another way in which you can exit Hogwarts magically, which also then sort of suggests that Dumbledore doesn't have Fox yet because otherwise they could just use Fox to teleport out of the castle. Right? Not that Fox himself might not already be in the movie. I mean, after all, it's unconfirmed whether or not the Phoenix that appeared to Credence at the end of the last movie was Fox or not. Personally, I kind of think it is. In fact, not only do I think it's Fox, but I also think it is the very baby that drowned at sea. You know, return great Avenger with wings from the water. Which by the way, you can check out that full theory by clicking the card. That is like the number one theory we're leaning on here at SCB as absolute truth. And, and like not for nothing, but the very fact that a phoenix made out of water appears behind the logo at the end of this trailer only makes me think this is even more true. And really that's most of what we see in the trailer, but honestly, I'm a little more concerned about what we didn't see in the trailer, or should I say, who we didn't see because nowhere in this trailer did we see one Tina Goldstein. Like how can you spend an entire movie getting Newt and Tina back together then in this movie assembled this crack team of wizards plus one muggle that includes Bundy, but not Tina? Well, I'll tell you something. I don't think they did leave out Tina. I think Tina is in the trailer disguised as Bundy. Look, we all know how much Harry Potter loves Polyjuice Potion and a good old fashioned body swap. I mean, Grindelwald has literally pulled this off twice in the first two movies. And if you ask me, it's about time the good guys used it against him. Cause here's the thing about Bundy. All we know about her is that she takes care of the animals and is crushing hard on Newt. To me, that means she's a really good character to fool us, the audience with, because if she acts flirty with Newt, like no big deal. That's all we know about her. But it would also be totally normal for Tina to act that way. And Tina's also good at dealing with the animals. I mean, look at her in Crimes of Grindelwald, just handling the Zowu, no problem. Plus Tina out of any of them may need the disguise most of all, specifically because Queenie switched sides and can read minds. Not that I don't think Queenie couldn't recognize Tina's thoughts, but the appearance change may give her that one moment of hesitation, that one little extra advantage Tina might need. And I mean, besides that, like where else would Tina be? Like, I guess she could be on her own mission to get Queenie back, but that already looks like what Jacob is doing in this movie. And it seems like that Venn diagram is practically a circle because Queenie is with Grindelwald and that's what Newt and the team are doing. It's suspicious is all I'm saying, you guys. It is sus. Vicious. Ben, that's everything I've got for you today, man. My question for you and everyone else is what do you think? Could Bundy be just Tina in disguise? Are there any other takeaways from the trailer that you are super excited about or that we should look into? Let me know all your thoughts in the towel section down below. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. As always, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you haven't already, ding that bell and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter content from us. If you wanna see the truth about Aurelius Dumbledore and his returning as a great Avenger with wings from the water, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see why Jacob is definitely a descendant of Helga Hufflepuff, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in another life, brother.